Hey, my name is Liz with Big Hairy Dog, and today we're going to be going through uh, Prism, Point of Sale, X, Z out as well as a few um, tender uh, there's a few tendering options, returns, and we're going to also be taking a look at customers through point of sale as well. Uh, so we have a pretty full schedule ahead of us. We're going to get started here in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and give us just a second uh, longer for those stragglers who are still trying to go ahead and uh, join our webinar here. Again, this is Liz with Big Hairy Dog, and we'll get started in about two minutes here. Thank you so much. All right, I think we're actually just going to go ahead and get started for today. Uh, and so right now you guys are taking a look at our PRISM point of sale screen. I'm actually just going to go ahead and use my retail pro button over here on the bottom uh, to jump back out. So we're going to go ahead and jump out to our main point of sale here. All right, and so if you guys have any questions as we're going through the webinar, please feel free to raise your hand or type out the question, and I'll try to go ahead and tackle them as we go. Um, if it's going to be something that's a little bit, uh, or that will be covered um, later on in the webinar, then I'll go ahead and let you guys know that, and we'll go ahead and tackle it when it comes up. Other than that, we're going to go ahead and get started for today. So again, this is Prism. Uh, this is Prism Point of Sale with re um, and that's going to be uh, one of Retail Pro's newest and greatest releases here. And so this is an entirely uh, web-based point of sale. And so you can see I'm actually on a Google Chrome tab here, and I can go and have multiple tabs open. Um, so if I'm a buyer or anything like that, I can go ahead and be doing some work in inventory as well as doing a little bit of research. Um, of course, the biggest thing with Prism is that, you know, because it's uh, web-based, it can go anywhere that you need it to go. And so we need to go ahead and get started here. We're going to go ahead and while we're in point of sale, I'm going to go ahead and jump into a new transaction. I did want to take a moment to kind of point out uh, a few other options that we have here as well. So we can go ahead and have our uh, transaction lookup or our um, transaction history. Uh, we do have the ability to open our drawer, close our drawer, and change the till or drawer. You can see this is kind of grayed out because my drawer is currently open. Uh, we're going to walk through a Z out in a little bit here towards the end. Uh, Beside that, we also still have a lot of the amazing functionality that you had in version 9 um, just now available, you know, in the, this newer newer um, landscape in, in, the, in the web. And so that's going to include things like our disbursements. Uh, and so remember, disbursements are ways that we can go ahead and track any money coming in or out of the drawer that's not part of a normal sale. So let's say you needed to go ahead and take $20 out of the drawer um, to pay the window washer or anything like that. Um, and so we want to let PRISM know, hey, do not do not expect this money in my register. It has been pulled, and I'll, I will tell you the reason why. Uh, right now, I'm going to go ahead and jump into my new transaction. And it's going to open us up into our slick point of sale here. And so over here, we are automatically by default dropped into item lookup. Here's where you'd be able to go ahead and scan your barcodes and get that directly in there. Uh, for the purpose of my training here, I'm going to go ahead and utilize my search function. 
And as you can see here, uh, by default, I have it set up to search by ALU. Uh, but using this little plus button here, I can go ahead and add additional uh, ALUs to search by. I can also go ahead and hit this little down arrow and select something different to search by. So if I wanted to search by also uh, vendor code, I can go ahead and add that. And then I have a few options as to how the search is going to run, whether that be I want it to exactly equal this vendor code, uh, not equal, I want it to be empty or not be empty. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say my ALU is not empty. Now I know that's gonna show me most of my items, uh, but it's just to go ahead and grab a, a few and get them onto our screen. Uh, but of course, we'd be able to type in the ALU here, and most likely for something like the ALU or UPC, you're going to utilize the equals functionality. But I'm going to go ahead and just hit search here. And so now it's searching for all of my items that I have in ALU. Um, and as you can see, it found quite a few. And so for here, I'm just going to go ahead and pick a few random ones here, and I'm going to utilize the little checkbox right in front of them, uh, right in front of my items, that is. And just like in Retail Pro, you do have the ability to control these columns and what you see. Uh, how you control them varies a little bit, uh, but we would, of course, walk you through all of that. So I'm going to go ahead and um, use this to go ahead and select a few more. So let's just go ahead and say I'm going to buy all of these. We're going to hit OK. Get all of them onto my screen here. All right. Now from here, I have a few options depending on uh, where I'm highlighted on the screen. So as you can see right now, I'm highlighted on a specific item. And so I get a few additional um, tabs that are available to me for that item. So I can go ahead and click into my discount, and I'm able to go ahead and free write a discount there, or I can jump into details, and I can get a little bit more information uh, in regards to the price and my discount. Now I can, of course, just remove these items as well, or I can void these items out. So I can go ahead and hit that void. Now the key difference between a remove and a void is that a void would keep the item on the screen. A little bit of a digital audit trail for us. Uh, for whatever reason, we decided to not pick up this item. Uh, and then a remove, of course, just strips it from the screen entirely. Uh, now there might be, or there are pros and cons to both. Um, and I would say ultimately it just depends on the nature of your business, which one you want to train people to use, but both are an option just like they were in version 9 if you're coming from, from version 9. All right. Uh, but here I'm going to go ahead and hit my details button as well. And so my item details button opens up a separate little pop-up for me. So I have the ability to go ahead and see all of this information on my item and particularly what price level we're pulling from. Um, and so if there's another price level that this should be, we can always go ahead and double check or edit it here. Again, we have access to our discounts. And so here I, it looks a little bit different, but you can go ahead and apply a discount amount. We can apply a discount percent, or we can go ahead and set the receipt price to be something new and specific. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and just say that I have a 10% discount, and I'm going to select a reason. And these reasons are, um, are customizable. We can make our own discount reasons. But I'm going to say this particular item uh, was slightly damaged. And we're going to go ahead and leave it at that. I'm going to go ahead and hit Apply. And there we go. We can see that populated right over here. I'm going to hit OK. All right. And so we've done a little bit to this item uh, or a little bit to this receipt. Um, I can also add a customer to my receipts, of course. Uh, if I don't have the customer, I can add them on the fly from point of sale. And that's super easy. We're just going to go ahead and hit the new over here on the right-hand side underneath the first name and last name columns. And then there we go, we get an additional pop-up. That's the other great thing about this being a more web-based is that um, everything is very seamless. Uh, we're not taken to a separate screen and there's not really a whole lot of loading time in between. Uh, and so I can go ahead and start filling this out. Those things highlighted in red are absolutely required. And let's go ahead and add a phone number. Sure you guys will remember that phone number 
that's our tech line. If anybody has any issues with uh, Prism, Retail Pro, any questions at all, um, things not working out quite right for you, please go ahead and give us a call and we'll help you out. Of course, if you wanted to go ahead and learn a little bit more about PRISM as well, we have our 800 number. Uh, you can always just give us a call and we'll go ahead and make sure you get transferred to the right place. But I'm going to go ahead and hit save here. And there we go. It's just that easy to add the customer on the fly, get them on the screen. And once you see, once we've added a customer to a receipt, you'll be able to go ahead and read that customer name right at the top of that receipt. And so here we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and be able to tender this transaction. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit tender transaction. And now it will default to the amount that they owe, but we can do split tenders very easily. And so this is defaulting to cash. I can switch that tender type by going to tender type at the bottom, and I can go ahead and flip that to, let's just say credit. And let's say that's what they're going to give me first. It's $100 in credit. Card type, let's do American Express. And we're just going to go ahead and say take there. And there we go. Next, and you see I defaulted to cash again. And this time I'm, I'm going to leave it at cash, actually. So we're going to go ahead and cancel this out. And let's say uh, that the taken amount, is, we're going to go ahead and say handed me $80. So we're going to go ahead and hit take one more time. I, of course, could have used my um, tender buttons, my, my uh, dollar amount buttons right below my taken amount. I find it a little bit easier to type it in. I'm going to go ahead and hit take. And you see, and now my take button turns bright orange. It says give. It is that reminder that we have to give them some change. And I do have to come into this box and click that give, my reminder that I am giving them change. And you see, now it's broken out into payments and change. Uh, but other than that, we are totally balanced. And so now I have the option to print an update, uh, print a gift receipt, or update only. For right now, I'm going to go ahead and print an update. All right, and it shows you that reminder one more time. These are the following tenders used, and don't forget to give them their change. All right, I'm going to hit OK. And for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and use my PDF printer. Press button. Let's preview this. All right, so we were using this design go ahead and, uh, for another client of ours, but we can see this is a pretty standard receipt design. We do have access to a designer, just like we do in version uh, 9 and version 8 of Retail Pro, that doc designer, so you can customize this a bit. Uh, but you can see it does display really nicely. Everything's very clear. We have our customer on the top, transaction number, receipt number, and of course that barcode that's going to save our lives if they need to go ahead and come and return anything or have an issue with this particular transaction. All right, other than that, I can go ahead and cancel out of here. And there we go, and now we are ready for that new transaction. Um, we're on a brand new receipt, and we're ready to go ahead and start uh, helping out the next customer. The other thing I wanted to go ahead and show you guys was our transaction details. So underneath that new button where we entered um, our new customer information, you can enter that transaction. And here in this transaction details is where we have access to our POS flags, our comments, and we can go ahead and give entire reasons for the, the particular receipt. You normally see that a little bit more with return receipts. Uh, but for example, our comments here, these are printed on the receipt and they are customer facing. Um, so like in the example we had just run, I ended up selling them a damaged item and I gave them a little discount. A uh, good time for me to go ahead and jump into comment one and make sure I have it written there. You know, a customer agreed to, um, you know, 10% off in exchange, you know, for taking this damaged item. Um, and that way, you know, of course, if there's any issues later on, we have that right there. Um, the other thing that we have is going to be, like I said, those point of sale flags. If you guys are not currently using point of sale flags or you're not sure what they are, I just want to take a quick second. Uh, the POS flags are amazing ways to go ahead and get additional demographic information or really any uh, additional information on your customers uh, directly at point of sale. So this is where you normally get that very infamous, how did you hear about us question. It gives us a good indication on what marketing strategies are doing really well and what marketing strategies might need to be retired because nobody's mentioned them in X amount of um, you know, weeks, months, however long it's been. 
Um, so you can actually see this POS flag one, that's what I have it set up for, that my marketing POS flag. Um, and so when they drove by, they saw my movie ad, uh, heard me on the radio, or they are a repeat customer. And these POS flags can be required if you desire. Um, there's a little downside to requiring them is that somebody, you know, doesn't want to answer your sales associate might pick uh, one at random and that kind of throws off our data. But uh, with that in mind, it's still very, very valuable information to have on our, um, on our clients. And the other thing, of course, is like I said, more demographic information, um, information that you don't necessarily need to ask and our associates would be able to go ahead and pick up. We also have our fees and shipping information here. So if you do a lot of shipping from point of sale, um, you have very easy access to that. We can add additional things uh, like our gift wrapping fees, the service fees, anything like that. Same with price level. So we can go ahead and just like we can change the price levels for individual items, uh, we can change the price levels for the entire receipt. Um, it's important to note that currently I am signed in as a system administrator. Now the system administrator has pretty much access to all things and doesn't necessarily adhere to the same uh, security regulations that our point of sale users will adhere to. So it's an important thing to keep in mind just so that you know not everybody is going to have access to changing price levels on an entire receipt. We would have to go ahead and give them that permission. And of course, we also have our discounts here. Um, and so those are going to be discounts on the entire receipt, um, commonly referred to as those global discounts versus the line item discount. So a discount on just the line item, which is what we took a look at a little bit earlier today. Same with our taxes. We have the ability to go ahead and change our tax area if we have the permission to. Um, and there's certain things that we wouldn't be able to go ahead and change directly on the fly. We would have to go ahead and jump into our admin console to change. Um, but taxes is usually something that you probably don't want people changing too much. We're going to go ahead and close this. All right. Um, and we won't go into coupons too heavily in this webinar, uh, but I did want to go ahead and point out that coupons are available within PRISM, and so we can go ahead and um, it, it, it's actually uh, very easy, pretty user-friendly. I actually really enjoy the coupons feature here within QuickBooks, or excuse me, within PRISM. I uh, apologize. Um, and in my opinion, it is definitely an upgrade from the coupons in, in version 9. So if you have any questions at all, please, again, go ahead and give us a call and we'll go ahead and walk you through that um, or take a look at our other previously recorded webinars to get a little bit more of a hands-on on coupons and building promos within uh, PRISM. To close that. All right. And so with with our point of sale, inevitably we're going to come into, uh, we're going to need to have to do a return at some point. Um, you know, unless our store policy is absolutely no returns, you're going to run into it at some point. Um, and so directly from our point of sale, I can just hit the return button and there are two options that I have, set item type and then search for a receipt. So I would be able to go ahead and just, um, you know, return a singular item, but probably the easiest and the way that I, I, the preferred method in my opinion is going to be based off an original receipt. If I gave you a discount on this item on your original receipt, I don't want to go ahead and return to you the, the full amount of that item. And the only way I'm going to remember or I'm going to know or the system's going to know if you had a discount on that original receipt is if we reference that original receipt. And so I'm going to go ahead and search for a receipt. And so I can enter the document number. I can enter the customer first name or last name here. Or, of course, I can just go ahead and leave it open and then search for my date. I'm going to just go ahead and hit search here. And I, I did that because I know I only have a few transactions within that time period. Um, but, of course, this is the one that we just did with the Liz Martinez as our customer and then the only other one we have no customer so I could have entered uh, the Liz Martinez as well but as you can see once I highlight on the item the items are populated in the table just below that so on the very top this are the receipts uh, below that are the items within those receipts and so if I wanted to still, let's say return one of these items all I have to do is again highlight on the on the receipt desired 
we'll go ahead and get some return details that start to populate. But the important part is that we highlight on the item and then we hit that POS return item. We, of course, can hit the select all, but hopefully they're not returning everything. Let's just say our 3XO here. This particular one was just maybe a little too big. I needed just uh, these two. So we're going to go ahead and POS return item. They get that cute little green checkbox on it, and we can go and continue to return more. Uh, if before that, I'm going to go ahead and enter a discount reason. So let's just say that I changed my mind on that one. And so I'm going to go ahead and return to document. And then if I do charge a returning fee or a restocking fee, um, you guys noticed that was actually there as well. So I can go ahead and search for that. Oh, it's already there. Sorry about that. But you can see we can add that return fee or return shipping amount here for that restocking fee. Return to document. And there we go. And now just as, as easy as that, we have that item here on the screen ready to be returned. And look at that. It picked up my 10% discount that I had originally sold it at. So now I can go ahead and tender this transaction. And you can see, actually, let me go ahead and return to the document. Um, and as you can see, over here, we have this little negative right in front of that 85. So it's uh, already a visual cue that we're going to be returning this money. Uh, we would be able to go ahead and continue and make a sale or add more items to this receipt. Hopefully, we can go ahead and get them to do an exchange instead. Uh, but for this example, I'm just going to go ahead and run a straight return. So we're going to go ahead and tender the transaction. And then I can go ahead and give the full amount. I can go ahead and just say give here, and it's going to default to that 83.58. So we're going to say give. And there we go. Now that just shows up in my change, and I can print an update, or I can update only. I update only it reminds me to give that change back one more time. And there we go. We're ready for the next transaction. And that's about it for a, for a return. And like I said, the easiest way is absolutely to reference that original receipt, but you do not have to. We could get an item on the receipt and then just say return this item. But of course, in that example, we would have missed out on that 10%, uh, or we would have give the, given them an extra 10% from what they paid for it. All right. So from here, I'm still my point of sale. I can go ahead and hit my retail pro and jump out to point of sale one more time. And over here, I can go ahead and jump into my customers. Uh, remember, I do also have my disbursements. And so customers, we already took a look at adding a customer to the screen. I want to take just a moment to go ahead and talk about jumping into customers, a new customer or customer lookup. So you can add a new customer from point of sale. But of course, going into customers, new customer, we get pretty much that exact same pop-up. So we're really not losing any functionality uh, doing it from point of sale versus in our customer's module. All right. The other thing that I wanted to go ahead and show you was, was the disbursement. So I'm going to go ahead and hit a new disbursement. And so there are a few types of disbursement. So we have a cash drop, paid out and paid in, and of course our drawer open. Uh, for me, that drawer open is grayed out just because I don't have uh, actual physical hardware set up on, for, on this machine, just our webinar machine. Uh, but I can say probably the most used, especially during these holiday seasons, is going to be the cash drop. Hopefully, it's the most used. That means you have too much money in your drawer. We need to drop them and take it to the bank, take it to our safe. And that's what I, my sincere hope for everyone here. So we're going to go ahead and enter that cash drop. So default associate is going to be whomever um, it was is currently signed in. You see, we have a few of our uh, our sales associates and our trainer training uh, members here as our associates. But we'll go ahead and leave that at Karen. I'm sure she won't mind. Uh, we can add a disbursement reason. The reason why these are blank is because they are set up in my administration console. Uh, but we can go ahead and set a a note, and essentially we just add tender. And so once we add tender, it brings it down here, and it just lets us fill in how much. Um, and it does show us our drawer balance. As you can see, I haven't closed this drawer in some time. We've been doing lots and lots of sales, so it thinks we have quite a lot of money in there. But let's just say I'm going to go ahead and drop $500 of that. And so now I can go ahead and update only or print an update. 
So let's go ahead and just say that print and update. When we do print and update, that does allow you to go ahead and put something into the drawer, um, even if the system doesn't um, expect that money. If you are able to go ahead and give your closer a heads up that, hey, there is going to be a disbursement on the receipt, they tend to appreciate it. Or sometimes that's just the nature of the business. They want as, uh, as many uh, opportunities as possible to go ahead and create a viable audit trail. But other than that, we could just update, and that would go ahead and create that disbursement receipt. And so if I were to search for that, now I can go ahead and see we got a cash drop. From today, that was for a total of $500. We are not expecting that in my drawer now. All right. So those disbursements, super easy. Again, if you guys have any questions, happy to go through the pay in or the pay out, uh, but they work almost exactly the same. We just have to go ahead and let PRISM know how much we're taking out, and that's all it really cares about. All right. Next on our list is our X and Z out. So they do live separately right over here. So we're going to go ahead and click our X and Z out. Um, as a reminder, our X out is essentially the checkup on our business. You can run this at any time. You can run it as many times as you want. Um, for one workstation, all workstations, usually people will run them for their entire store or all workstations. And Z out, on the other hand, is your end of day. That's our closing and our reconciliation. So that usually is reserved for the end of the day, uh, slash whenever you normally go and reconcile the drawer. We do have some people who they do not close at the end of the day. What they do is they reconcile uh, first thing in the morning and then real and then open a new drawer that they can go and use for that day. But essentially, that's the key difference. I felt whenever you'd like, any time, and the yeah, usually one for that period. And so I can go ahead and hit my X out here. And so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I select my subsidiary and my installation, my store. Workstation, I will not be selecting that. I'm going to go ahead and let that open. I want to catch all sales. I really want to see how the business as a whole is doing. Uh, because of that, I also will not enter drawer or till or cashier information. And so I can go ahead and save this. Come on, there we go. And let's go ahead and actually put on my workstation all, we'll do this all, 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 all. There we go. All right. Oh, sorry about that. Looks like we're frozen just a little bit. So in a moment, you should be seeing our print preview here. There we go. Okay. And so this is my X out report preview. And you see it is set up to just go ahead and print on a regular um, 40 column receipt printer. That's usually what associates have at point of sale. Uh, but it'll go ahead and default to whatever printer you have set up on the workstation that you're using. So it's a pretty standard. So again, we have our begin time and our end time. Um, it looks pretty much just like a Z out if you, you know, are on Retail Pro or uh, any one of Retail Pro's processes, um, you know, seven through nine, PRISM included. Everything's going to look pretty much like this. So we can go ahead and see all of our tenders broken out, our cards broken out, and you can really, um, you can customize what your X out looks like as well. So again, we can go ahead and run this at any time. I'm going to go ahead and jump back to Retail Pro, point of sale, X Z out. And now our Z out, there's a few more steps to the Z out. And that's just because our Z out is where we actually reconcile our drawer. So one more time, Z out. And so now under Z out, we have two options, register open and then register close. My register is currently open. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to register close. And there we go. So workstation, it's defaulting to my own workstation, but you would be able to close it for other workstations as well. And so drawer, till, cashier, we're going to leave that all at all. And that's because I, I'm not assigning separate tills to my associates. Everyone's using the same uh, drawers, just signing in when appropriate. Now we're going to go ahead and hit next. And there we go. 
And so over here, we can go ahead and see our currency. Right now, I'm set to U.S. dollar. Uh, you might not have these other currencies. Um, it does depend on what currencies you have set up in your administration console. Uh, now over here, we have our denomination and a place where we can enter our account. And so um, even the order in which we see our denominations can go ahead and be edited. Uh, but let's just start going down here. Let's just say we have 10 pennies, 10 nickels, 10 dimes, 10 quarters. That'll work. Well, that would have worked, but I like things to be in order. And I'm just going to go ahead and that's fine. Okay. Start adding a few. And this is normally where, you, again, you would go ahead and take the time and just put in the physical count of bills that you see. in hundreds, hundred dollars. And so you can see we have a few different options here. Um, and this is just to show you that we can go ahead and have it essentially um, however you would like. So if $50 makes more sense, uh, then we would go ahead and leave it at the $50. If 50s makes more sense, then we would go ahead and leave it at the 50s. Um, if this were a real V out, then I would go ahead and uh, stick with one and kind of continue all the way through. I know that this register hasn't been closed in quite some time, so I'm not too concerned about having too much in my drawer right now. Uh, we could also go ahead and edit our leave amount, but our leave amount and our open amount, or our open amount um, is decided when we actually open our drawer. The leave amount, we can set up a default leave amount, so that way it automatically populates, just like it did here. I did not, there was not a time where I had to put in the 200, it just defaults to that. Uh, but if I needed to say I'm actually going to leave 250, it gives me the leeway to go ahead and add that. Or maybe it's 251. That's just how my 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 deposit broke out today, and I didn't want to take that penny with me, so I just left it in the drawer. Um, I could, of course, also hit that enter total, and it's going to go ahead and flip over, and it will allow, allow me to enter my U.S. dollar totals here. I'm going to flip back to current denominations, and that will go ahead and let me enter these one more time. Now, I know I lost a little bit of work here, so I'm going to go ahead and flip back to enter totals, actually. And let's go ahead and throw in uh, eight. Actually, let's go ahead and say it was 89. There we go. We'll go ahead and leave it at that for right now. And so you see in this scenario, though, when I enter my, my totals, I do not get the opportunity to enter in those, those um, counts separately for each of these denominations. And so a lot of people will tend to go ahead and leave it at counts because that has saved some people. Your drawer is short $2, um, and it looks like you counted the singles, but you didn't count the rolled nickels. And guess what? We had a roll of nickels. There's the $2. Easy as that. We figured out how that drawer was closed uh, just by looking at our immediate count of our denominations. So there are plenty of benefits to leaving it at uh, count denominations. We're going to go ahead and hit next. And now at this stage, we're, this is where we can go ahead and put in our uh, non-currency items. And so I can go ahead and say, yep, that's the credit card that I took. And if we're printing, if we're printing those credit card receipts, I should be able to go ahead and max that up to a physical receipt in my drawer. Um, a lot of places have moved away from that because we're no longer requiring signatures on um, the merchant copies of, of, um, re of excuse me, of receipts that use credit cards. Uh, but you might still have things like um, internal internal loyalty dollars or uh, especially checks. If you accept checks, then there should be a physical check in your drawer, and we need to make sure that that matches up. And so if this was a physical check, we double check that, that check number matches what PRISM thinks we should have. We'll check the match, or we can use our select all. Uh, under our added non-currency items. So this would be the perfect place to add anything that we're missing. So let's just say, again, there was a, um, a check there. There was a check in the drawer, and PRISM didn't know about it. Maybe it was a check from yesterday that somehow got lost. It's not really my job as the closing, as the closing associate to figure that out, but I do want to make sure that it is accounted for, that it's part of my job. And maybe our closer is actually the manager, which would mean that it is their job to find out as well. <laughs> uh, all right. And then our customer name. Oops. 
it was really too hard to spell my own name. Okay. And we're get, we can add additional notes. So again, we're going to say found in red. And we're going to hit save. All right, come on. And now under my check, I got one. And that's about it. And so now, again, you can see it's not part of my uh, taken non-currency list. It is part of my added non-currency list. So there is no need to match anything because I took the time to actually add it. You can see it's segregated here. So now I can see my credit cards, my checks, and then, of course, the gift certificate, anything else that's added as a non-currency item. Uh, COD uh, is cash on delivery. It's a little bit of a dead form of tender. This is usually where we see people renaming this field and using it for things like their loyalty dollars. So we can go ahead and give out, um, you know, victory dog loyalty bucks. And so if you bring this voucher to, point of, to our point of sale, to our cashier, uh, they'll take $5 off. Or it's essentially $5. Uh, but we do have to go ahead and collect those vouchers just to make sure that we're getting uh, back the amount that we went ahead and, and gave out. So this would be a great place to go ahead and use that. So we're going to go ahead and just hit next. And the door will not reconcile. Do you wish to continue? We're going to say yes. All right, there we go. And it gives us our reconciliation counts. And so we can go ahead and see uh, whether we're short or whether we're over. Uh, we can go ahead and see additional or added, um, and especially their missing currencies. So if there is a check that is missing, it'll go ahead and be down here. And we can go ahead and uh, see it right here in our missing non-currency total. But other than that, if we're OK with how short we are or how over we are, we can just hit Finish. Uh, now. PRISM does give you the chance, especially as this admin here, uh, to back out and unreconcile the drawer and correct our count. Um, this might not be the case for all users, again, due to those security permissions. This admin can do it. Um, and because this admin can do it, it's a good time to go ahead and kind of remind people that uh, a blind close is an option as well. So if you don't want people to know exactly how short or over they are, you can require a blind close. And that does stop people from being able to back out. Yeah, back out. Would you like to delete these tenders? I'm going to go ahead and say no for right now, but I can keep backing out and editing this here, pocketing some money. We're going to go ahead and, yep, uh, no. We're going to go ahead and say there, reconcile, and come back right to this page. Um, but again, once we're at this page, we've done all our hard work, we've counted, we've hopefully recounted if we're short or over, um, but that's what I have in my drawer. And so we're going to go ahead and just hit finish. And there we go, we're all done. And I can actually see this in my, uh, in my Z out lookup. That's where our former Z outs are going to be. And so I can just go ahead and search there. Um, let's go ahead and see. All right, just one moment while I hunt down the one we just created. Sometimes there is a little bit of a delay while it runs back to its main here. Right. Here we go. Sorry about that. Just took an extra second for it to show up, but here we are. Um, and so this one is just going to, again, show us our same breakdown. It's like I said, it looks pretty much exactly like our X out here. The only real difference between it is that it gives us the chance to enter our, our counts of the drawer and reconcile our drawer. That, that's just about it. But other than that, it's still going to go ahead and break out your sales, break out your returns, your nets. And this is uh, your final end-all, be-all for your account in small debt. This is looking at every single um, receipt that went, went through point of sale. So, so long as we had the item on the receipt, so long as we had uh, the tenders on the receipt, it'll show up in our XZ out. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. 
jump back over here to our point of sale. All right, and so that does kind of uh, bring us towards the the end here. And so I will go ahead and say, if you guys have any questions so far on anything, please let me know. Uh, the other thing is uh, a little bit of troubleshooting. And so for tr when it comes down to troubleshooting um, items at point of sale, usually the things that I see people having an issue with are um, on a new transaction. Oh, actually, it's not good. Perfect. So if you saw that pop up, our register was not open because I closed it. <laughs> so we do have to go ahead and jump into our X and Z out. And let's go ahead and do that X out, X out or excuse me, the Z out. And then we're going to go ahead and hit that open register. And there we go. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at the workstation. Again, I don't use tills, drawers, and I'm not really too particular about the cashier, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that all blank. Uh, but I do want to go ahead and make sure that we are on the right workstation. That's really the only thing I have the ability to edit here. Other than that, we're just going to go ahead and we can hit next. And again, we can go ahead and enter our counts. We can go ahead and enter totals instead. And I'm just going to go ahead and say uh, we have 200 here. And then finish. Register has now been open. Jump over to point of sale, the new transaction. Uh, so again, I feel like the thing that I see people hitting a, hitting um, a wall at is when we're trying to search for items or just remembering um, the, pro the steps needed to go ahead and get a proper search. So if we go ahead and open up that search, Remember that we have to go ahead and use a search by, so we have to decide what we're searching by. You can go ahead and add that description one. And this is the other part. So I know that there are items um, in, my, in my inventory that have X in description one, but none are showing up. And we, we get dialed in, it turns out that we're looking at equals instead of contains. Um, and so that's why we're not finding the items that we need to find in an appropriate amount of time. So we can go ahead and start adding that. The other thing is whether they're active or inactive, uh, but that really is a big one, being able to go ahead and, and search for items. And so I'm going to go ahead and just say is not empty. Actually, we'll leave it at contains. Contains. Let's see if I have anything that contains the word shirt. Searching, awesome. All right, and then the other thing, being able to go ahead and bring these items back to the to the receipt. And once again, I will remind you that we do have to go ahead and hit that little check mark at the front of the item here. Um, and unfortunately, without doing that, you're not going to go ahead and get your items uh, slash not get all of your items. So that's another pitfall that I go ahead and see people running into pretty often. So let's go ahead and get these two items, hit OK, and getting them on the screen. Of course, um, I will also see people running into that wall uh, or running into um, the two different discounts. Uh, remember, we have our discounts that are available on the line item, and then we have our transaction details, discounts that are available for the entire receipt. Keeping them straight um, is one thing. Uh, the best thing, in my opinion, or in my opinion, is if you are not allowed to double down on discounts. If I can't give a global and a line item discount anyways, that's my store policy, let's make sure that we're training our associates to kind of take one route, stick to it. Close that. And then, of course, um, our first and last name for our uh, customers. We can also go ahead and add additional information using a little drop down. So if I wanted to add email, I can go ahead and search by email instead. Um, and so that's something that if you guys are currently on PRISM, would definitely um, you know recommend playing with because sometimes people would uh, you know we may we may have their phone number and we might have um, incorrectly spelt their first or last name, maybe even both. Uh, but we know that we can search for their phone numbers. So just understanding that you have additional search options when it comes down to your customers. All right. And so um, I know I said I'd leave time for some uh, for some questions, and I haven't really stopped talking. So I'm going to take a quick break here and um, wait for any questions that come in. But other than that, 
uh, that just about does it for everything that we're going to cover in our webinar today. We've gone through our receipts, returns, tendering, um, adding customers, a little bit of troubleshooting, and of course our X to be out. Um, yeah, please go ahead and ask any questions now. Other than that, thank you so much for joining me. And remember that uh, this was recorded. We will be sending out this recording to everybody who is registered, and it will be available in our previously recorded webinars um, soon, soon here. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's usually not the same day, but pretty soon. All right. Um, and as a one final reminder, uh, whenever you are um, tendering, it will go ahead and default to cash usually, and we can change the tender by just hitting tender type. And we went through that pretty quickly, so I wanted to go ahead and just make sure that um, I said it once more. So we'll go ahead and hold for any questions. All right, so I don't think we have any questions as of yet. Again, my name is Liz Martinez with Big Harry Dog. We do have any last minute questions. If you guys remember something just as we disconnect, uh, please feel free to email me at Liz M, that's L I Z M, at bigharrydog.com. And I'd be happy to go ahead and help you out. Thanks so much, and everyone have a great rest of your day.